Sometimes you need to write and execute the same code over and over again, and this is the case when we use functions. They allow us to minimize the amount of our code and make our work flexible. As the definition, we can say that functions let you group a series of statements together to perform a specific task. So as we said, if you need to repeat the same code over and over again, you can reuse the function rather than repeat the same set of statements. Alright, in order to create the function, we need to use a keyword function, followed by the function name, let's say test. The name should describe the task that function is performing. Then we have to place parentheses, in which we can pass some parameters. We use the parameters when functions need to be provided with some additional information in order to achieve a given task. The steps that the function has to do in order to perform its task are placed in a code block inside the curly braces. The code block consists of one or more statements. Let's go ahead and put something inside the code block. I'm going to run to the console. Hello there. If we save, then we will get nothing in the console. So the statement in a function is not executed. In order to execute the code, you need to call, or in other words, invoke the function. It's very simple to do, you just need to write the function name with parentheses. So now we have hello there in the console. Alright, now let's go ahead and write a bit more complex example. Suppose that the person is trying to pass an exam and enroll at the university or at least at the college. For that the person needs to get the proper score. So I'm going to create function, let's call it pass exam. And I'm going to pass here two different parameters. The first one is going to be name. As for the second one, let's write score. Then imagine that in order to enroll at the university, it's required to get at least 71 points. So let's create the variable pass uni and assign to it 71. Then create another variable, which will be a lower limit to pass an exam for the college. So let's call the variable pass call and make it 51. Okay, now we are going to use if statement. At first, let's go ahead and check if the person could enroll at the university. So write if with the condition score is greater than or equal to pass uni. And then run to the console name plus enrolled at the university with then plus score and plus points so if this condition is false which means that he or she has got a lower score than the limit of the university then we need to use else if statement which will check if a person could enroll at the college. So let's use else if statement with the following condition score is greater than or equal to pass call. Then run to the console some text. Actually, I'm going to grab this text from here and just change university into college. Alright, the next possible case is fail. For that, I'm going to use else statement. Let's run to the console, name plus failed. Alright, so the function is ready, but as we said, in order to execute the code, we need to call it. So, I'm going to write the name of the function, pass exam, and pass here the relevant arguments. I'm going to write nick as the name, and the score. 85. So, as you can see, Nick enrolled at the university with 85 points. That's the power of functions. For every next student, you don't need to write this code again. You just need to call the function over and over again and just change the arguments. For example, let's call pass exam and pass here Mary 75 and then call again the function with the arguments John and 45. 
So we have here the proper results. Mary enrolled at the university with 75 points and John failed. All right. You may notice that sometimes I said parameters and then arguments. Let me explain what is the difference between them. When the function was declared, you saw the name and score. They act in the same way as the variables do, so they are called parameters. But when the function was called, we specified the real names and the scores, and these values are called arguments. Make sense? Okay. Suppose that the score consists of quiz score and essay score points. We can create a function which will calculate the total score. So I'm going to create a function called calc score. I mean calculate score. Then I'm going to put here two different parameters. The first one is going to be quiz score. As for the second one, let's insert here essay score. Then I'm going to create another variable inside of the block of code. Let's call it score and assign to it quiz score plus essay score. So in order to get the score value, we need to use a special keyword return. The return statement stops the execution of a function and returns a value from that function. In this case, we want to get the score value. So I'm going to write return score. And now I'm going to call this function as the argument inside of the pass exam function and set the arguments, for example, to 29 and 37. So this function will calculate the score value and return it as an argument for the pass exam function. So you see John enrolled at the college with 66 points. 66 is the sum of 29 and 37, which are the arguments of the calc score function. Make sense? All right, so that's it about functions. Next, we're going to discuss the arrow functions which are added to the ES6 JavaScript. The main goal of the release of the ECMAScript 2015 version was to minimize the amount of code, and one of the perfect examples to achieve that in ES6 is to use the arrow functions. I'm going to create a simple function expression. Actually, we call functions function expressions when we store them in the variables. So in order to create a function expression, we have to declare the variable. Let's call it multiply. And we have to assign to it a function, but in this case, without the name. Then I'm going to pass here two parameters, x and y. As for the block of code, I'm going to multiply those two parameters. So create the variable a, which should be equal to x multiplied by y, and then return the variable a. Let's invoke it with some arguments, run to the console, multiply 10 and 5. As you see, this function expression doesn't contain lots of characters and it is very easy to read. But thanks to arrow functions in ES6, we can write this function in a more concise way. For that, we have to get rid of the keyword function. Then, after parameters, we have to place an arrow, which actually consists of the equal sign and the angle bracket. So if we save, then we will get the same result. Actually, thanks to an arrow functions, we can transform this function into an even more concise form. When we have two or more statements inside the curl braces, then in ES6 version, we have to maintain those curl braces. But if we return here directly x multiplied to y without a variable, then we can remove these curl braces and then remove even the keyword return. Now we can say that this is the really short and the concise transformation of a function expression. This is a really great feature, but on the other hand, it is a little bit hard to read the code, especially when you're first introduced to this feature, but I think that after some practice it won't be a problem. In this case we have two parameters here, and that's why we surround them with parentheses, 
But in case of one parameter, let's suppose we have only the x, which is multiplied by 10, then we no longer need to use those parentheses. We can just simply write x, and you see that it works fine. So again, when we use only one parameter, we can write it without parentheses. All right, let's see what happens if we don't have parameters. Let's delete x and then write 10 multiplied by 10. And also remove those arguments. You can see that we have here the syntax error. The JavaScript engine cannot recognize what this error is doing here. So when we use function expressions and we don't have parameters, then we have to place here empty parentheses. So you see that it works fine. All right, so this was all about arrow functions. Now it's time to move on to the next topic, which is arrays in JavaScript. The array is a special type of data. It doesn't store just one value, it stores a list of the values. Arrays are helpful, especially when you don't know how many items a list will contain, because when you create the array, you don't need to specify how many values it should hold. You create an array and give it a name just like you would do for any other variable using the const or let keyword followed by the name of the array. The values are assigned to the array inside a pair of square brackets. And then each value is separated by a comma. Let's insert here some names. Let's say N, Bob and John. So in this case we have an array which consists of string values, but you can pass in an array either strings or numbers or any data type you would like. You're able to create an array with different data types simultaneously. I mean you can use strings, numbers, boolean values, even arrays and etc. For example, we can add here 10, then the boolean value true and a new array with some numbers. As you noticed, we can use an array to store multiple values inside one variable. This is very convenient and helpful because it allows us to avoid creating multiple variables at the same time. Let's go ahead and log it to the console. So here we have our array. The values in an array are accessed as if they are in a numbered list. It is important to know that the numbering of this list starts from 0 and not from 1. Each item in an array is automatically given a number called an index. This can be used to access the specific items in the array. So you see that the first item n has an index number 0, the second item has index 1 and so on. The same we have for the sixth member which itself is an array and it consists of three different values and they are numbered in the same way as well. You can also see here the length which is a property of an array and it shows us the number of items that array includes. In order to access the specific item of an array we can do it using the index so if you need to access for example the first item n you need to write the name of the array and in the square brackets the index number of the item in this case 0. So we have n in the console in the same way you can access the other items if we change 0 into 1 we will get the second item. So in order to get access to the item of the array that is placed inside the main array at first we need to get access to the main array itself so now we have access to the sixth item of the main array but in order to access to the specific item of that inner array, we need to open again square brackets and write the index of the specific item. So you see, 2 which is the second item of the second array. Alright, in JavaScript we have several built-in functions which we can use with arrays. Those functions are called array methods. Before we demonstrate some of those methods, I'm going to show you one thing. Let's go ahead and create new array call it colors and then put here a couple of colors let's say white black and red 
In general, we can change any of the values inside the array. For example, if we want to change the value of the second item, which is black, we can simply access to that item and assign to it a new value, let's say green. If we log the colors to the console, then you will see that black is removed and it's replaced with green. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about some of the array methods. Suppose that we want to add a new item to the array. In this case, we can use a method called a push. This method adds a new element at the end of the array. So, if we use this method and put here, let's say, blue, then you will see that the blue color is added at the end of the array. And the length of the array has increased and it became 4. As we said, the push method adds the element at the end of the array. In order to remove an element from the end of the array, we need to use another method, which is called pop. So you can see that the blue color is removed. If we need to remove or add the items at the beginning of the array, there are two methods for doing that, shift and unshift. So if we use color.shift, you will see that the first item is removed at the beginning of the array. Now let's add an item for that. Use unshift method. Put here color purple. So we have purple at the beginning of the array. All right, the next and the last method that we're going to demonstrate is index of. It's very useful and also it's frequently used. This method searches the array for the specified item and returns its index number. So if we want to get the index number of the red color in the array, we need to write colors dot index of And then we have to pass here red. Now we got 2 because the index number of the red color is 2. Let's go ahead and search for another color that is not actually in the array. I'm going to change red into, for example, yellow. So you see that we have minus 1. It means that the color yellow wasn't found in the array and the index of method returned minus 1. Generally, when we use the index of method, and the item is not found, it always returns minus 1. Alright, that was all about arrays. Let's go ahead and move on to the next topic.